And right now, it's time for that time when we talk to our special guest. Tonight, our special guest is singer-songwriter John Hanlon. John is now living back in New Zealand and has been busy lately writing books and enjoying his new home in Uruwai. Catch up with the latest in the life of John Hanlon and be ready to win a copy of his latest book, Love and Magic. John Hanlon. <laughs> How are you, mate? <laughs> Good to see you, John. Thank you. We don't see you enough, do we? I mean, John Hanlon once, once in our, in our heydays, you know, the same time as me, John Hanlon was everywhere. Yeah. Turn on the radio, John Hanlon. Look on the TV, there was John Hanlon. Weren't they wonderful days, John? Wasn't on TV though, Gerard. I was on radio. On TV. <laughs> but, yeah, well, that was it was fun. Yes, yeah. it was fun. It's fun for all of us, not just me. Yeah, I, I know you had a, a little dispute, didn't you, with one of our TV producers back then? And um, I've heard that story. Yes. Should we yes, go into that, or should no, we I conveniently think it's been, it's ignore been that? Told, yeah, it's been told. <laughs> Other than the fact that it did prove to me that you know people in power yeah. <laughs> can definitely detrimentally affect your future. Yeah. So, John, um, for those who aren't seeing you on TV and who aren't hearing you on the radio all the time, of course, a lot has happened since those wonderful days, haven't they? Yes. And uh, lots happened to everybody. It's you did what many New Zealanders um, did. They went to Australia and started a whole new life. Yes. Got to know those people called Aussies. <laughs> I've actually gone to school. Not many people know that I actually went to boarding school in Australia for th three years. Before yeah, in I was, Perth, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, a, now, tell us about those days when you arrived at boarding school in Perth. You started off in Malaysia, didn't you? Well, well we travelled between yeah. Malaysia and Singapore yeah. and New Zealand. Yeah. And I, uh, I went to boarding school in um, uh, West Australia because my parents then lived in the jungle. So Which, The jungles of Malaysia? Yeah, but literally yeah. in the jungle. You literally know, like, in the jungle. So 50 oh. miles in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And there was one little school for, for basically little kids. That must have been an adventure. <laughs> Your dad was a New Zealander. Yes. He'd been in, uh, he was an engineer, wasn't he? Dad was a mechanic. A mechanical engineer. Mechanical engineer, engineer yeah. who worked and, with big equipment. And he met your mum, who was Chinese. She was a Chinese born in Malaya. Malaya. He was a travelling mechanic for um, Caterpillar. Initially, he had other jobs mm. after that. And they needed Caterpillar tractors, didn't they? They used yeah. Caterpillar yeah. tractors. And then, you know, there was, it was a time of lots of construction. We subsequently worked with... Uh, the reclamation of Singapore, and, and that's why we were there. You know? mm. So we followed Dad, basically, like many families. Yeah. Where Dad went, we went. You know? yeah. That's exciting. So along comes little Johnny Hanlon, and uh, <laughs> grew up in the um, with his mum and dad in the jungles of Malaysia. Yeah, well, my brother and I. Yeah. He, 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 my brother uh, T J spent more time in the jungles than I did because mm. he stayed there for two years because he was young enough to be there. And it was one, a very, very exciting place. You know, there was they, tigers and elephants. Tigers. <laughs> then they said, John, we're going to send you to a more dangerous place, a boarding Australia. school in Australia. <laughs> Australia. <laughs> believe it or not, I, we'd be living in Malaya before them. Believe it or not, I was quite uh, excited about the concept. Okay. You, you know, time is, when you're at that age, you don't think of time. It's only when you actually arrive and you're surrounded by other kids all crying for their mummies, you know. Was it a Catholic or? No, it was a, it was a Church of England school, Church which was England. a shock to me also, yeah. because I was, my, my father was a lapsed Catholic and my mother was a Buddhist. <laughs> so religion was not exactly huge. And suddenly I was going to church seven times, no, nine times a week. So you got home and you'd say to mum and dad, who's this Jesus Christ? Yeah, Jesus Christ, I said. And you know, I, I, I remember being embarrassed because I wasn't con confirmed. I confirmed, I'm not even christened, you know. <laughs> And so, and so I did all that, you know, uh, but, but the reality was, you know, it was a boarding school, which, and, and I was, as I say, Eurasian way before it was yeah. fashionable, you know, <laughs> and being Eurasian. Well, now, was there prejudice against a, a, oh, a young 12-year-old Eurasian kid? Yes, the answer is yes. And how did you, this must have been such a shock to you. I, I, I was picked on for, by xenophobic people, which are most of people mm. in West Australia, probably even today, to be quite honest. <laughs> Um, no, don't say that about the Australians. They're yeah. not like that. Well, they, you know, West Australia in particular. I mean, they, they used to take pride in running over Aboriginals. I mean, it was <laughs> that was pretty ugly. But you know, so did the slow kids or the fat kids mm. or the, you know what I mean, mm. the, the mummies boys, the redheads. It's a bit, and people do that and they sort of gang up. And people and I discovered very early that people act differently in groups, and then they do individually. I had I used to have this. I can't remember what it was now, but as a, a smart-ass young kid. 
I used to talk about, you know, that the group intelligence was directly proportional to the amount of people in the group, you know, and yeah. I had some way of putting it. So, and unfortunately, all my smart ass remarks would go straight over the top of the head of these guys, they'd punch me anyway. You know? <laughs> but, I became a, but I became a good fighter yeah. you know, as a result of that. John, you're, you've got such a fascinating life. We could talk for hours, but to, just to get a few points out of the way, Howick, then of course, then the great John Hanlon, the wonderful songwriter, Damn the Dam, all the success in the music business, then back to Australia, successful career, but you're back in New Zealand now. Yeah, I live here now. Yeah. And, you live in, and you've chosen Murawai. You've got some yeah. lovely land out there. That's right, yeah. What was the decision to choose Murawai? And, uh, in a, well, a number of things. One yeah. was the golf course. I love to play golf. Yep. I'd, What's I'd your handicap, out. John, before you continue? Oh, my handicap's not good. <laughs> not good. Okay, well, my, handicap's, my handicap's about 12 now, but it, it, should be, it should be better. It should be 11, shouldn't it? <laughs> no, no, it should be about 8. But, uh, but um, I, I'm actually quite happy at about 12. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because... Uh, uh, with with a, a couple of quick fixes, which I've just had, I should, you know, I should be able to improve that again. But it's you know the fact that I'm you know, nearer to seventy than anything mm. that 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 um, you just have to accept it. And it's really hard, as mm. everybody of a similar age knows. You refuse to admit that it's age. Can't yeah. possibly be age. Yeah. The fact that the twenty-five year old you're playing with is knocking it, and you've just you know nailed one. He's knocked it eighty meters past you. <laughs> Can't possibly be the fact that you're getting older, yeah. but it is. So yeah. the golf course is, was drew the, the the golf course. I think that the nature, the yeah. fact that it's also within striking distance of, of this of Auckland. Yeah. You know, yeah. you know, not you know. We've, everybody knows that I, as much as I am a proud New Zealander, mm. I think Auckland's an incredibly ugly city. Um, uh, I, I would I would like to sit all the city forefathers down, the people responsible for approving buildings, mm -hmm. and actually shoot them, not even have a discussion, just like get no rid trials. of them. No <laughs> trials, just say. I mean, I've seen you know the trial is I've seen what you've done, you know, go, and, and let's replace you with somebody who actually cares because nobody cares. This yeah. look, this looks when you come to when you've lived overseas like I have and travelled the world like I have, and you walk down our street of our main city, mm -hmm. it looks like nobody gives a shit. Yeah. You know, it really does. You know, it's just, it is just awful, a scary place to be after dark. Mm -hmm. um, I would never, and, and you know, I can hear people being outraged or watching this, and I will say to you, go on then, you walk your mother down Queen Street after 10 o'clock on any night of the week. <laughs> Count the drunks. I've never seen so many drunk people in the city yeah. as I've seen. Maybe downtown Sydney on a Friday night, you know. John, uh, we're running out of time. As I say, wonderful to talk to you. Uh, but while you're out at Murawai, I'm not sure, but um, you've got a word processor, and guess what? <laughs> no, this has been. This is not just Murawai. I've been writing. <laughs> I've been writing stories for years. Yeah, I, I realise that. But yeah. when did these these four wonderful stories come into being? Uh, they probably they probably evolved over. Um, I've I've got a whole bunch of short stories. This is just the first book that we've done called Legend, Love and Magic, because it yeah. was the title of one of the stories. I had to release the biggest, anybody who's a writer will say that you will never actually release anything because you keep rewriting it. You go, oh, I can do that better and I can do that better. And finally some friends of mine who are writers just slapped me around the head and said, just release the books. As a handsome, articulate man, John Hanlon, huh. has love been good to you? <laughs> Love's never a bad thing. <laughs> it's been good to you, has it? <laughs> <laughs> you I, I'm not going to comment on this. <laughs> <laughs> I've had my share of ups and downs like everybody else. I am, after all, a songwriter. You know. I thought I'd throw in a zinger there, John. Yeah, that's it. that is the thing. I don't, where do I go with this? <laughs> where do you go with this? I tell you what it is. Love is a work in progress. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not a four-letter word. <laughs> no, it's not. It's uh, like golf. <laughs> now, when you say love and magic, are they love stories or are they just about love? Or no, the, the, the first four are loosely about love of various yeah. types. One is... Uh, um, love and Magic is, is yeah. about, a, about a love that gets going slightly wonky. Yeah. Uh, then there's a song, of song uh, one called uh, uh, Growing Old, mm. with um, growing, growing Old Rigid or something, but, but it's, it's about a love that's endured. Mm. But the, yeah. uh, another one is about uh, a pure fan magic fantasy, and another one is about, I suppose you'd say, love of life. Right. Now, the, the fact it's called Love and Magic is one of the stories is called Love and Magic. That's all. Now, John, many of our viewers would love a copy of this, so we're going to give away a couple, aren't we? We've made yes. pre-arrangements. Yes. We were going to give away a hundred, but you said that was <laughs> no. just a bit too much. 
So um, we need a very intelligent question, John, because our viewers are going to email jared at thebeatgoeson.co.nz. And in the uh, subject line, they're going to put the answer to this very intelligent question. And I'm going to leave the intelligent question to you, John. What's the book called? Is that intelligent That's enough? Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> What's the book called? <laughs> Love and magic in the subject line. And uh, we're going to, how many can we give away, John? Uh, you can give away both. We can give them both two Because that's all I've got at, yeah. the, at the moment. But yeah. um, the books are actually yeah, where very can you cheap. Get them? If well, you can get, you can get you them on. I've got, an, I've got my own page on Amazon now. I'm very impressed with this, but um, you can go to my website, johnhanlon.co.nz, and that'll take you to link through. To, to Amazon? Yeah, yeah, to Amazon, or, or yeah. there's other places you can okay. buy, of course. What's it going for, John? What's the price? It's, I, th I think it's online. It's um, it's two ninety nine. I think, as, oh, as, 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 value, e as an e-book. Yeah. Because uh, uh, what I'm trying to do is get breathers. Mm. So both, I'm getting another, another book of short stories coming up later in the month, uh, later in the year. We also yeah. uh, low priced. And I think it's about ten dollars, maybe eleven dollars, as a, a print to order. In other yeah. words, if you're like me and you prefer, but you a won't find copy. this in a bookstore. Not yet. Not no. as yet. No. What yeah. will happen is uh, we will do another book called Stealing Smokes later, yeah. and then the two of them plus got, some more stories. I've got an advanced copy okay, of that. Okay, that's an yeah. advanced copy, and then then uh, there will be a, a collected works which comes mm. out, and that will go into bookshops. Are you stealing sm smokes because they're so expensive? Or? <laughs> no, 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 no. That's a great. That's a great little story. Stealing smokes. It was originally called stealing smokes from Dennis's dad. Yeah. And and um, you know, you, you, everybody has an opinion, and, and somebody says, "Oh, you can't put that on the front of a book." Yeah. You know, it's got to be shorter. So it became stealing smokes. Now, John, just before you go, um, you've got a great album out. Um, um, I've got the re yeah. retrospective. Yes, yes. How can people get hold of the album? Because people uh, still again, love again, your I music. think if you, I think the best thing to do is I've got a, a website now. When you go to it, you'll be amazed at what you can Everything's find. Everything's there. Everything, even yeah. poems and get and songs, free downloads, and I'll constantly do free downloads. And the, and and, um, and I'll I'll even be putting up new songs that people can vote on, so I can decide what to record. You know. And of course, there'll be a little part in there, the meaning of life. John Hanlon's meaning of life, it'll explain it. For I think as I'm getting older and I'm getting grumpier, <laughs> I feel like saying stuff, you know, it's like about the Auckland city. And I, so I feel that like if I piss enough people yeah. off yeah. that they do something about it, mm. you know, because I notice that young people are very angry at my generation at the moment, and I understand their anger. I'm, sorry, I'm not mm. guilty, but, but, but I do understand their anger. So I think it's time that I probably did a bit, a bit of this again. Yeah just to get a reaction from yeah. people, you know. It keeps, I'm, I'm, you, keeps you young. Doesn't well, it like, keeps me young, and I, keep, I, I like to remind young. people that they, you know, I, I would like people to stop thinking that politicians run the, pull them, the strings, mm. and to remind them they do this. Yeah. And, and by not voting, you're not actually doing anything. I, and I have heard all the arguments about why people don't vote, right? I've heard them all from people close vote. to me. Gosh, I think know. it's so important. But I, I, think I can never yeah. understand why people don't. Oh, well, they have their reasons for it. Yeah. Is, oh, I'm not going to make a difference, or I live in this area. It's not going to... And the, the whole point of it is that, 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 you know, people talk about democracy, and they think that we like democracy. You know, mm. they think, well, we live in a de democratic yeah. thing. You know, America's a great democracy. But actually, people don't really like democracy, because democracy is when people get really pissed off and march, yeah. and then everybody goes, oh, I don't want that old, you know, that's democracy. But that's actually democracy at work. You know those people that say, I'm not voting because it won't make a difference? Yes. They don't apply the same rules to going and buying lotto tickets, do they? No. No, no. I mean, there's, <laughs> people have, we need, a, the, world needs, idea, yeah. the world needs a paradigm shift in, in what it does. You know, yeah. um, we, we can have these conversations. Uh, I, I, could, I could, the elephant in the room in the world today, right? I'm going to say what it is. The elephant in the room in the world today is, and we all know, that for a fraction of the cost of the w waging wars, we could solve every problem in the world. Yeah. Every social, every yeah. medical, every single inequality yeah. in the world could be solved by with a fraction. One of aircraft the money. carrier. Do you know the price of no, an aircraft? No, I don't. I, I don't know the cost of an aircraft Two carrier. Billion, oh, no, five, six billion dollars. Okay. How many houses would that bolt? Yeah. How so, many the, roads the, would but that we all know this. Yeah, yeah. And the minute we're saying this, I can. I just know people watching this are going, "Oh, here he goes, another naive." I get love this word. Yeah. Idealist. Yeah. Every time somebody calls me an idealist, I go, yes, and your point is what? <laughs> well, our point is we've run out of time, John. Thank <laughs> Thanks, mate. We're going to see you soon. Thank, Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, John. Coming up next on The Beat Goes On, 